have is a new media. Free media in Ghana is only the Fourth Republic. Prior to that, we've not had it. That is free. So they themselves face their own challenges as an institution. But we need to put pressure on them to do their reporting in ways that are not inflammatory when the situation is already tense. Mm -hmm. Anybody else has something to say? Yes. I want to go back to the. Uh, I want to go back to your the Please. Please, please. Uh, please, please. Mm -hmm. Something that is going on right now in Ghana. Mm -hmm. We have some lion. Yes. And um, I can quote last time when we went for mm -hmm. independence. Mm -hmm. Someone was dropping pure tarab. A friend of mine. Mm -hmm. And I asked him, oh, Junior, why? Make it outside. Why, why, why do you have some lion? Mm -hmm. Because we, we think some lion is there to, to sweep. Pick up this. Very good. The same thing if we should equip the police and then we lean on them that there is police. We are going to cause atrocities for the police to come in and then quench. Which, by the time maybe the police comes in, maybe you and I are gone. Yeah. So yes. We should think of uh, educating ourselves than uh, thinking of the police. So the peace, the peace is ours to maintain. Yes. The police are just, the security agencies are there to support us. And maybe they use their high level intelligence to fix other issues. But we are the first line of defense of our peace. What are they? Yes. Yeah. Uh, so I think in relation to the media, mm -hmm. there is this recent uh, survey or recent mm -hmm. by Professor uh, Katari, mm -hmm. yeah, whereby I think at the end of every week or every month, it's the name and shaming uh, thing. Naming yes. and shaming uh, media station that yes. you know really are uh, offered their yes. platform for. Yes. I think it's a, a step in the right direction. Yes. Aside that, how do we complement their effort as uh, as responsible youth in the country? Mm -hmm. We must also maybe. When we have a vibrant youth group mm -hmm. that can become like a vanguard movement mm -hmm. to really put pressure mm -hmm. on these media groups. Because the media groups are, 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 are there as well to also put pressure on government and its, its agencies. Mm -hmm. Why don't we also, as the youth, also mount pressure on them to let them do the right thing? Mm -hmm. Also, when you talk about you, the create, creative, you know, um, in fact, writers and artists and musicians are really the ones who change society. But you need to build in some awareness, right? So we know, for instance, this young man has talked about littering. Littering is a problem. But sometimes it's also subtle in how we, how, how we portray. So maybe you put up a play, and casually somebody drinks something, the pure water, and in the play they drop the plastic, right? you find that in, in a lot of movies, they'll just let that go. That's just how we act. But there's, a, there's an opportunity lost there to comment on what the person has done. So maybe when the person drops, you go, ah, pick it up. And you build it into the dialogue so that the person who is, the, the audience who is actually watching, doesn't even know what you just did. You just did a piece of propaganda. You said lecturing is wrong. But it's also in how you, crap, you put it in the art. And the art is a fantastic platform to do, this, to do these kinds of things, you know, maybe like hand washing or the letter. Or my favorite one, seeing a whole row of guys urinating by the roadside. Ah. <laughs> but that when you build these things into your, your, your art, your program, it's an opportunity to comment and also inform and change our behaviors. Because most of our behaviors and also what we are going to, what is our culture, which is, you know, even though people don't want to really concentrate on culture and the arts, it's vital. The songs we listen to, the manner in which they are sung, the things they say, the movies we watch, these are all, the arts is the only platform. Somebody can do development work their whole lives. They can produce pieces of paper, books, this whole place. Oh. But if somebody doesn't take that and incorporate that into arts, the average person in the street will never hear it. So you guys are sitting on an amazing platform and I'm, I, we are, I'm pleased to hear with everything. But build that in. It's an, you can you know you can influence. We sometimes think that we are hard to change as a people. You know that we are stubborn. We are not stubborn. Nobody is giving us the messages. We are not a stubborn people. Nobody in this world is stubborn. But if you if we build, especially if you do programs towards children, young children, and you make it, you make certain things fashionable in the in the drama you put up, you will see that attitudes and um, um, and actions begin to change. So keep up your work. I'm bringing the discussions to a close. Does anybody have anything to say? Are we hopeful this year?
I'm still philosophers. I just want to throw more light to what about your feelings. Mm -hmm. There is something we call blind solidarity. In our houses, you can see that maybe your dad and your mom, they are supporting party A. But in that case, you as a child, you don't want to put yourself into that party because you know whatever is good for you. And then what I'm trying to put before the youth is, don't, don't pick whatever daddy and mommy says that about concerning this party, party things. Don't say it's heredity, so I must follow them. In this case, heredity is, is not concerning whatever dad and mom are and capable of here. So what I'm trying to put up is, please, the youth don't say, because our great-grandfather was a member of the NPP party or NPC party, so it's a must for me to also vote for them. Follow your heart and do whatever you Thank you. Yes. Uh -huh. Oh, you, you talked. <laughs> you will come back to me. Yes, so I, I, I just want to uh, say that uh, one problem we have is um, information, as we were saying earlier. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. So, when they, maybe we have state institutions mm -hmm. that are supposed to give us credible information, when information comes out, we, they are, those are the ones that we, mm -hmm. we, we are supposed to accept as mm -hmm. a fact. Yes. Now we have the Electoral Commission coming to declare that Party KK has won. Mm -hmm. Then Party Z said no. no. It, it's like then they are challenging this. Now is it can, can go to any level to see that this party has won. Mm -hmm. if, before it can even get that chance, people have, mm -hmm. people have started fighting. Yes. We show as, as citizens or as a nation, we should be able to rely on those institutions. We have the trust in them. Mm -hmm. These are institutions that. Um, I say the constitution protects, mm -hmm. and they have a responsibility. Mm -hmm. And I believe they also know their this are responsibility. Mm -hmm. They know that the state is what they are accountable to, not an individual. Mm -hmm. So whatever information they bring, mm -hmm. let, let, let us do our best to accept mm -hmm. those informations rather than listen to our political leaders mm -hmm. who come to say things or rubbish those informations in their personal interest. Mm -hmm. If we are able to accept the, the information from the state institutions, I think you move know, uh, a great way forward. I want to comment on two things. One is that, by extension, when we're coming in the camp, we're having a discussion about how that we, uh, as, a, as a country, we are very good at making laws. Eh? We are good at making laws, and we are good at setting up exemplary laws and institutions, right? So, but for those institutions, there are two things that must happen. First, we must make sure those institutions perform and sanction them when they don't. Secondly, on our part, we must put pressure on the institutions. One of my favorite institutions in Ghana is Shiraj. I don't think we as a people use Shiraj enough. It is a fantastic institution. But if we, if, in order to build trust, you have to give the institution a chance to perform on a wide variety of issues. But so if we pass these laws, which we should, set up these institutions, which we do, fill them with good people, and if we do not engage with the institution, what would happen? You know, um, some years ago, they set up a, a woman and juvenile unit called Waju. In the region where I'm from, central region, how the girls are taking the boys to court. Eh? It's fantastic. For abandonment, sometimes they've had a child with the, with the man, the man doesn't pay. Prior to Waju being around, there was nothing you could do. The man could choose whether or not to look after the child or not. If the man chose to her, uh, Fine. If they didn't choose to, the woman is lost. If they are in a relationship and everything is going well, then the man may decide, ah, these are my children. As soon as there's divorce or he goes to date somebody else, he puts all his money into the new children. That is completely against the law. But when we set up Waju, if the women did not engage with Waju, well, it wouldn't work on our behalf. Do you see what I'm trying to say? So when we have institutions, we must make it work. If you feel that, oh, me just going to Shiraj by myself is not, I can't do it, get some people. That is why in law they have these things called class action suits. We can form a group and say that our rights here are being infringed upon. This garbage bin that is here that they will not come and pick up is an infringement on my rights, so you take it to Shiraj. So those are, those are the, you know, about the institution. This is very, very important. The other thing to buttress that what the young man said about information. I went to a meeting 
and I discovered that the amount of information certain NGOs are producing on behalf of Ghana is amazing, especially in areas of environmental abuse. Just amazing. Even if they did a documentary and put it on, the things we would see. But they have a, a problem where it's in their sector, though they share it with certain organizations, and or they feel like the press may not be interested. They won't cover the issue. So we do recognize that we have a huge problem getting information that is generated on behalf of the ourselves to ourselves. And I hope that people are in discussions, how we can improve, how we get information to people so that you can judge what is happening in Ghana. Uh -huh. Rosing comments, yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. In terms of the institutions, mm -hmm. not that sometimes Ghanaians are not aware about the existence of the institutions. Mm -hmm. There's a party yes. among Ghanaians, mainly because of how these institutions perform their, their responsibilities. So sometimes I go to the police or I, I, I go to a club to go and report an, an issue. Mm -hmm. Corruption. Yes. Now I'm, and now I'm, 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 I'm being, I'm being told that. told to bring facts, I'm being told that in Ghana we have corruption in our years and in our departments. Yeah. Now people are now corrupted in our years and our so before you before they even sit, sit on your case, they rubbish it. it down. So next time you think I'll go there, I'll not go. I will not go by there. So sometimes when a party eats us up for a very long time, we then begin to take a lot into our own hands. It's a problem. It's a problem. And what we need to realize is that you know, you are young people. How many of you how many elections have you voted in? One, two, and <laughs> three. Imagine that and not imagine. We keep the fourth republic forever. So you see the elections you are going to be voting in, the registration exercises you are going to be voting in. Democracy is a lot of work. You know what I'm trying to say? And the, and the work we have to do to safeguard our democracy must happen in the year in which we go to elections, and especially, in, especially more so in the years in which we don't have elections. Also, the district assembly elections are more important on some level than the MPs or the presidential. So the amount, you know, every time you think you've won as a citizen on an issue by engaging with it and pushing for your rights, then another issue comes. You see what I mean? And if early on we are going to be apathetic, then we have a real problem. So I urge you, don't be. Some of you did not even, I mean, most of you were not even around for coups. This is a very different Ghana. You know, since what, 1992? It's nice that some people think that we've had this for our whole lives. No, from 1957 to 1992, it was a different Ghana. And for the most part, it was a horrible Ghana in terms of gov governance. So the situation we are in now, this is for your future. Do you see? You, we want to not only make it stick, we want to make it work on our behalf. Because I don't mean to alarm you, if you compare 20 years to what? 35 years. The history we have in the 35 years is still there. That Ghana we used to be in those years is still very much in our veins. So there's a lot of work we have to do. So we can't be apathetic. That doesn't mean that you wake up every day and you see a looter. Eh? But when you live, when you, when you are a citizen and you engage, when we talk about citizen responsibilities, sometimes uh, you can go six months without doing anything, even a year. But immediately you spot something, try in your own way to bring attention to the issue. Because here in Ghana, we put up with a lot that we shouldn't put up with. And if we put up with things we shouldn't put up with, it's, it, it cuts down on our level of living and, and the access and the resources we should have. Be engaged in a lot more things. Right now, people are in Accra divvying up some money, oil and gas. They, like they've been divvying up the money on gold, like they've been divvying it up on cocoa. This is all your future. So engage with the issue. So, uh, you, you asked the question that if there is hope, yes, there is there hope. Yes. I, I would say you must be very hopeful and yes. optimistic. But however, yes. there is no sense of hope in the atmosphere. No. Yeah, oh. There is no sense of hope.